Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we're going to do a this is not a top 10 on two ingredients, two notes that I honestly don't have very many fragrances that accompany these two notes. So I lumped them together. Uh, so this originally was going to be a pretty short video. One is the note of rhubarb and the other is the note of eucalyptus. Now, uh, I say it was going to be short because I went to the mail today and there was this in the mail. This giant box from uh, a friend, Armando, he reached out and said, Ramsey, I've got some stuff I'd love to send your way. I'm loving your channel. Thank you for all you do. And this is a great example. You know, he paid almost $20 just for shipping, just to ship the thing. Forget all the awesome stuff inside. Uh, and the reason it's open is I was about 10 minutes into the video when my daughter woke up from her nap screaming her head off. And so uh, instead of sitting here with one ear cocked, listening to see if she was going to stop crying, uh, you know, I, I uh, decided to stop the video, make sure her brother was taking care of her, and then start it over again. So I did open a couple of these that, that's in the box. So uh, we're going to do the unboxing, and then we'll do the This Is Not A Top 10. So it'll work perfect because it's a short This Is Not A Top 10. I honestly don't have very many fragrances in my collection with the note of rhubarb or eucalyptus. Only a couple, handful of each. So this is good. It's a perfect unboxing. And thank you, Armando. Seriously, it's very kind of you. Uh, I know you did not have to do this. This is way above and beyond. I already saw a couple of the things. Uh, so let's start with how I pulled them out in order last time. The first thing is, is a soap. There's a soap from this company called Phoenix Artisan Accutreatment. So I'm guessing it's like Phoenix, Arizona. Um, and this is a shampoo and conditioner puck. I've honestly never heard of a, a shampoo and conditioner puck. But we were in Arizona, we were in Phoenix about a couple months back in June of this year, and we stayed in Scottsdale, and it's beautiful. I mean, it's I really like it out there. I could totally live in Scottsdale. But they have a lot of these little shops, these little, um, you know, one-off family shops that do stuff like this, and it does smell amazing. And then from the same place, uh, he sent me this. And so this is how it came. Same company, this Phoenix um, Artisan Accu Treatments, and this is a Phoenix, what is this? Phoenix Aftershave Cologne, and I'll tell you what, before I read what it actually said, I opened it up, and I smelled it. There's the bottle. Cool little bottle, actually. Nice, nice glass. Quality. You can see the uh, back Phoenix, uh, Phoenix Shaving, trademarked, interestingly enough. And so I smelled it and I went, oh my God, that's a big patchouli. And then I looked at it and it said, um, Sangre de Draco with sandalwood and oud. Very interesting. There it is right there. Sandalwood and oud. And uh, it says alcohol, labdanum and sage hydrosol, orange blossom, water, essential fragrance, oil, Aloe, glycerine, resins, and absolutes. I thought it smelled a lot like patchouli. Uh, there's a big patchouli in here, I think. But I can tell it's high quality juice. Even, you know, I don't use very much aftershave. The only time I ever use aftershaves is if um, it's unscented, so it doesn't clash with my cologne, or if it actually matches the fragrance that I'm wearing. So this will be interesting. I might try this on, you know, if I shave before bed or something. Okay, next. Next, I pulled out this and it was neatly wrapped. And look at the writing. Look how much time he took on this. This is Santa Maria Novella, O de España. And it says Spanish leather, vintage gold foil label. Awesome. Um, I am uh, impressed that he's into stuff like that because that's the kind of stuff I'm into. It's not just Santa Maria Novella. It's the vintage gold label. I love stuff like that. And I got a little bit of this on my finger when I opened it up. Oh my God, this is... Okay, so if you guys know the difference between Russian leather and Spanish leather, Spanish leather is usually a little bit softer, a little bit gentler of a leather. Russian leather usually uses more of the... Um, modern isobutyl quinoline and birch and, you know, I love both. Actually, I love Spanish leathers. I love Russian leathers. Part of me feels like maybe even Guerlain's Darby is a take on a Spanish leather. 
Uh, so I love both. I love all leathers. I am a leather lover through and through. And when I smelled this instantly, I opened it up and I went, ooh, I, I wish I had my first reaction on this, but I got some on my finger too. And I can tell this is my, this is, this is my taste. This is going to be a good one. I can already tell. So thank you for that, Armando, very much. Okay, so that is pretty much where I stopped. So everything else was new. Everything else is new from here on out. So he sent me this little packet and inside of the packet is a bunch of little things. So let's see if I can open it up. Ah, this is the Pine Ward set. Okay, so someone sent me a couple of these. Uh, where are they? They're somewhere back there. But uh, this is Pine Ward. So this is a fragrance brand that I've really, uh, I did one video on them already and it was very positive. Really reminded me of Polo Green uh, with that tobacco and with the pine. And apparently this kid who founded this brand is like 27 years old or something I read. He's very young. And he lived in the Rocky Mountains. He grew up in the Rocky Mountains. And he wanted to do fragrances that reminded him of growing up in the mountains, the forests. And I was just so impressed by that first fragrance that I smelled. Because you can tell it was made by someone who is not a trend follower. It's really somebody who likes to go against the stream. Likes to go against the grain, you know. Uh, and that's a lot of how I live my life. I am a contrarian at heart. There's no doubt about it. And, um, so I'm very excited to dive into this brand more. And this is the sample set, I think. And, and, uh, I guess I should have recognized this bag because it's the same bag that someone else sent to me a couple of the other samples. I don't think the whole sample set was in the previous one that I got. So let me see, I think this might be the whole thing. Yeah, this is the whole thing. Um, there's Gristmill, Chandlery, Mirkwood, Funery, Fanghorn 2, Steading. So some of these I don't have. Well, now I do, but Apple Tabak, Revelaries, Boreal, Bind Bowl, Noki, Cotswold, Delfino, Brook Lane, Velveteen, Icefall, Pastoral, Ponderosa, Treckle, Eldritch, Autumnal, Oxylus, Nocturnus. Nocturnus is the one I did the video on already. It's very good. I really, really like this. This is like polo green, but with the pine note even more realistic, you know, because polo green, it's a designer. I mean, it's a fantastic designer, one of the best masculines of all time, but it's still a designer. This, Nocturnus, the, the, the um, pine note reminded me like you were smelling a pine note from a real indie brand, you know, it really smelled like an indie brand pine note. Very well done. Alpharin, and the final one is uh, Gelato. So these are all awesome because I can do videos on them. Thank you. That's amazing. This will, this will, uh, a lot of videos will come out of this. Let's put it that way. And I'm excited for this pine, this pine ward brand. I think there is a lot of potential here, a real lot of potential. So thank you very much, mate. That's awesome. That's amazing stuff. 
Okay, next we're gonna do some more samples. How about this? Lots of sample sets for the RAM to play with now. Um, oh, look at this! This is one I've wanted for a long, long time. I wanted to smell. I'm not, you know, so greedy that I, you know, I could, I can't afford a full bottle anyways because full bottles are through the roof. This is Andy Warhol's Bond Number no. Nine, Andy Warhol. Apparently, there's plum in here, and I actually bought. Interestingly enough, interestingly enough. I bought a Andy Warhol fragrance for like $9 online the other day. Where is it? I think it's right here. Yes. So this was the 1990s Andy Warhol fragrance. That is, you know, this is a great example. There's a difference between a unicorn, which is like highly sought after, like Gucci Nobile or Guerlain's Darby, and a hidden gem. This is like a hidden gem. This is a vintage, $9, short ingredient list. And Andy Warhol terminated this contract, or the, the people who run the Andy Warhol Trust or Foundation, he's long dead, so that they could sign the deal with bond number nine. How interesting is that? And so, um, seven and a half mils, this is more than enough for me to wear. That's awesome. I, that gets me very excited. Um, Tom Ford Santal Blush. Here's one that I've never smelled before. I've heard of it, never smelled it. Um, this is Les Parfums Kiko Macheri Bespoke. I have never heard of this. I don't think I've ever even heard of this brand. Les, Les Parfums Ki, Kiko Macheri. Um... Let's see if it's in Parfumo. Less, less Parfums. Nope, I don't see it. I don't see it, it's not loaded in there. There's some very uh, good stuff in here. Ooh, the Crown Perfume Company. Um, Matsukita. I know the crown, the crown perfume company is the company that ended up turning into Clive Christian. Clive Christian bought the right to use the crown perfume company because the crown perfume company, um, was, is a United Kingdom brand, obviously. And the queen way back when. I don't even think it was uh, Queen Elizabeth, but it was one of the uh, uh, one of the queens from the 1800s. I think it was ended up giving them the right to use the crown legally, um, but I can't remember the story exactly. But it's something like that. Uh, this is man. Some of this stuff I've never even heard of. Oh, this is Phoenix shaving is why it's it's. It's the same Phoenix shaving, I think. This is, uh, look at this. It's like a Halloween poster. Black Shroud in 3D. Looks good, though. I mean, it looks like, um, it, uh, top notes, menthol, mint, and rose, middle sandalwood, spice, and floral, bottom, vetiver, woody, and vanilla coming this fall. Very interesting. This brand, this Phoenix brand, is, is interesting. Okay, next we have... Um, Carner Barcelona Sandor 70. So I know I have a small decant of Carner Queer, Queers, um, that I still need to talk about. And so this is Sandor 70s. At the crest of Upper Barcelona, once a place to be to see and be seen, an iconic bar where the smoke of cigars flirted with the aristocratic leather armchairs. This smells good, man. Spanish leather. This is another Spanish leather. I think he's trying to hint something to me that I need to get into more Spanish leathers, and I think I do. 
Uh, here's Tom Ford, Lavender Palm. Another one. Another rare beast that I know of but never heard of. Or never got a chance to sniff. Uh, the Harmonist Yin Transformation. I've heard of this brand, the Harmonist. Uh, I've never sniffed anything from them, but I have heard of it. The Harmonist Yin Transformation. Where did I hear of this? It must have been... It must have been from um, Persilays, I think. 2018 sweet floral calypso orchid mandarin orange bulgarian rose almond milk there's a note you don't see every day in perfumery almond milk um ylang iris white musk benzoin sandalwood very interesting ah more harmonist okay royal earth sacred water Royal Earth, Sacred Water, and um, Guiding Water. Okay, are you guys familiar with this brand? I am completely out of the loop with them. I don't know anything about them. Let's see, Guiding Water, 2016. I guess they're all the same perfumer. Watermelon, Aquatic Notes, Ozonic Notes, Lotus, Jasmine, Cyclamen, Lily, Pink Pepper, White Moss. That's probably pretty airy and thin. Let's see, Guiding Earth, or Royal Earth. Royal Earth 2016, floral powdery carrot seed, angelica seed, and Brett and Rolly heliotrope, tonka, vetiver, and sandalwood. That's probably more my vibe. Okay, Carner Rosen, Carner Barcelona Rosen Dragon, Carner Barcelona Black Calamus, and Carner Barcelona Megalium. Megalium? I am not familiar with these, uh, with this Carner Barcelona sense at all. Megalium, an ancient fragrance passed down through the ages from a time when rose water flowed from the fountains and balsams perfumed the lavish private lives of the Romans from their bathing rituals to their chambers and boudoirs. I do like Rome history. Oh man, I don't know anything about this brand. This is a brand I've never sniffed before. I mean, I know of them, but I've never sniffed them before. Juice Box. <clears throat> Excuse me. Are you guys familiar with Juice Box? So this one is Live and Loud. I know they have, um, I know this brand has very uh respectable perfumers live in loud 2017 dominique ropion there you go spicy floral cardamom cinnamon geranium rose oud myrrh amber patchouli sandalwood cystus and musk this sounds like a brand that i'm i'm excited to get to smell uh this is no rules by the same house, juice box, no rules. Nice little samples. They look like, uh, I don't know, like a record maybe. You know, this sample is supposed to be like a record, I guess. Kind of a cool idea. Um, so no rules is um, 2018 Antoine Lee. They have good perfumers. Aldehydes, ether, Saffron, lavender, vinyl, cinnamon, leather, birch, and musk. Okay, I'm going to go off on a tangent real quick because I recently bought Eugene's perfume, Le Dollar Exquise from the brand Les Substrates, his brand. Beautiful packaging, by the way. Raised, quatrefoils, um, a good sturdy box. I'm going to bring this to work and spray away, let everyone smell the perfume, but... The reason I bring this up now is because there is there is a when I smelled this the very first time, I thought there was a connection to Emouage Imitation Man, which reminds me of a vinyl fragrance from the 70s. Because um 
This is supposed to be Christopher Chong's take on him growing up in New York City in the 70s. And there is a big vinyl note in here, I think. And this came out right around the same time as No Rules. And... But the dry down of this is much more like vintage Antaeus, Castorium, with that beautiful rose. And so the reason I bring this up is that I just found for the first time an Antoine Lee product that uses a vinyl note. So it is something he was playing with. Huh? The nose knows. The nose knows, man. I'm more convinced than ever that there's a little bit of a vinyl note in here. Antoine Lee, tell me if I'm wrong. Tell me if I'm wrong. But yes, I will be wearing much of Eugene's fragrance very soon. This is an amazing fragrance. And probably the reason I don't own Portrait of a Lady. Okay, next is uh, Black Powder by the same house. And you know what? This is perfect for me because I can put this on at night. I can wear this once or twice and talk about it. That's perfect. I don't have to wear it as my scent of the day. All I need is a drop. You know what I mean? A little drop like this is, is good. I don't have to wear it as my scent of the day. But um, Black Powder is 2017. Julian Rasconet. Again, they have good perfumers, man. They have very good perfumers. Spicy, leathery, blackcurrant, apple, pimento, suede, tobacco, leaf, frankincense, sandalwood, tonka, patchouli. Sounds like my kind of fragrance. Okay, um, Micro Love from the same house. They Each one kind of has its own little deal. This was black uh, powder. I like the uh, design. It looks like it has a... Yeah. Looks like there's a snake wrapped around the guitar or something. But uh, I, like, I like this idea. You know, this was the... No rules, like paper clips. Anyways, I think it's cool. Um, so, Micro Love is 2015. Fresh Aquatic from Dominique Ropion. Uh, Ozonic Notes, Apple, Neroli, Cinnamon, Violet, Clary Sage, White Cedarwood. White Cedarwood. Suede and Ambergris. Interesting. Usually not my kind of fragrance, but I'll, I'll give it a fair shake. And then you've got uh, Golden Serenade, Golden Serenade, which is 2018. Julian Rasconet again, saffron, clove, frankincense, patchouli, oud, vanilla, apopanax, and amber. Smells good from the blot from the blotter. Uh, and then finally, we've got Sirens and Sailors, Sirens and Sailors which is um, 2019. Julian Rasconet, bergamot, peach, osmanthus, rose, rum, absolute, whiskey, patchouli, vanilla, suede, and musk. I'm wondering, is this the one that's supposed to be about Amy Winehouse? I think each one of these was supposed to represent a rock star, if my memory serves. I can't remember. Uh, but if, if that is true, I think this one's supposed to be about Amy Winehouse because it's got the, the whiskey and the rum in here. Uh, and we know she struggled with addiction. Um, okay, let me put some of this back in its place or I will lose it forever if I don't do that right now. Uh, um, but I did want to, I want to share this with you guys because this is cool, you know. If there's uh, one in here in particular you want me to try to focus on first, leave it in the comments. I can't make a promise, but I can try. I can certainly try to, um, you know, do one if you want it sooner than the others. But eventually my plan is to get to all of them. I mean, I think that's a fair plan. I mean, I have a ton of samples that I want to get through and talk about and not enough time in the day. If I could just make a quarter million dollars a year uh, talking about perfume all day, I swear to God I would do it. Um, okay. So, you're going to go back into your home. Which is right here for now. And let's see what else is in this little box. Let me put this away. 
Okay, let's see what else is in the little box, shall we? This unboxing is, uh, this is a big guy. This is a big boy. Very kind of, um, very kind of Armando to send this to me. I think it's a Prada. Prada uh, number 11 Queer Styrax. Ooh. This is the face I made when I smelled the Santa Maria Novella. Ooh, because it was a, Rush, a Spanish leather. Ooh. I do like... I like what I smell from the uh, first sniff, I'll tell you that. Queer... Styrax. I know Prada had a more upscale line, but I've never smelled it before. Queer Styrax. Queer Styrax. Number 11. 2011. Wow, that's a long time ago. I thought this was a newer line. Daniela Andrea Styrax Neroli Serenolide. Not familiar with that ingredient uh vanilla absolute leather frankincense powdery resinous we all know that prada does soapy fragrances very well and there is some soapy feel you know what it is it's the neroli neroli always i'm gonna do it this is not a top 10 soapy fragrances one day um but soapy fragrances always give me that or neroli fragrances always give me that soapy vibe you know what i mean Okay, next. I almost threw the bottle instead of the packaging. Okay. Ooh, another Prada. Number three. This is the... Uh, I think these are the higher-end Prada lines, if I remember. Number three. Queer Ombra. I mean, you're hitting me where I like them. The, the, oh, that is even better than the Queer Styrax. At least from first sniff. It, this is much more my style. The Queer Styrax is soapy. It, it's much more Prada's original style, I would say. This one, this Queer Am Ombra... Hmm. I'm trying to look for it real quick on the Prada breakdown. Here it is. 2004? Wow. 18 years ago. Daniela Andrea. Okay. Amber and Brett. Oak Moss Carnation. Clove. Heliotrope, Oris Absolute, Jasmine, Coriander, Russian Leather. That's why. I love I just love Russian leathers, man. I was gonna say this this smells like Zerzhov Ohm a little bit from the from just first sniff. Neroli, patchouli, rose, sandalwood, vanilla, absolute, and cinnamon. <sighs> This will get aware very, I'm going to decant this into a, I'm going to decant this into a atomizer and you will get, a, you will get a wearing very soon. Okay, next. Look at this. This is way too kind of him. you get back here hopefully I'm not breaking stuff at the same time as I'm receiving stuff okay this is a fragrance I almost bought so this is crazy this is the I think this is the original calligraphy by Aramis I almost bought this um, from the same guy that I bought 
what did I buy from him recently? Tom Ford Tobacco Oud. He had this. I almost bought this. Wow. How fortuitous is that? Uh, this is... I think this is the original. Calligraphy. Aramis Calligraphy. I'm going to have to do some digging and see. But yes, I believe it is. And then, I think there's a couple more things in here and we're done with the unboxing. Amazing unboxing, actually. Amazingly kind of him. This channel has so much to talk about. This is Santal... Why do I know this? This is uh, A Mona de Oreo's Queer Santal Nabatea. Mona de Oreo Santal Nabatea. Nabatea. Interesting. That's good. Very good from the Atomizer. Oh, I've wanted to dive into this brand more. You know, I've always been curious about Mona de Oreos uh, because, because there is a Mona de Oreo fragrance that I bought that everyone loves and here it is, Mona de Oreos Queer. And for some reason, I just feel like, while it's good, I feel like the vintage bottles were probably better. I feel like it's probably lost a step because the way people talk about this is like the greatest thing in the world. And I like it, but I don't think it's the greatest thing in the world. I'm thinking the one that had the champagne-like cork on it. It looked like it had like a champagne, like like the thing that's on the cork that you twist to, op to open it up. Um, the older bottles of Mona de Oreo Queer, I'm guessing were... Um, I'm thinking this might be reformulated, but that's just a guess. I've never smelled the old juice. Okay, so finally, he sent me this. Look at this. This is an Avon Sterling 6 in the car. That's awesome. How cool is this? And uh, Justin sent me some Avons too recently that I talked about. So we are going to talk about some Avons, and you know what? I am not going to discriminate against Avon one bit. How cool is that? I mean, just for the collector in you, uh, how do you not think that is cool? Seven fluid ounces. Uh, Avon for men, Sterling 6 leather aftershave. What I will do is I will decant this and I'll wear it like a fragrance and just lather it on. First sniff, um, nowhere near as good as that Prada. This, this one so far, this queer ombre is the winner with the Mona de Oria or uh, Maria Santa Maria Novella Spanish leather coming in second just on just on first sniff, but you can't judge a fragrance by uh, You know by smelling it out off the atomizer like that, but again, I just want to say thank you very much I know uh, you definitely did not have to do that Armando. I very much do appreciate it uh, It's very very kind of you and you will hear me talking about these very soon. That's awesome. This car is awesome just by itself. Um, I, I think I put it in wrong. Hang on. As you can see why I don't have stuff in nice boxes because I'm terrible at... Okay, there we go. It's pretty cool. The tire, uh, the back tire is the thing you screw off to, to smell the fragrance. I mean, Avon put out some neat stuff. Uh, obviously, Armando's been watching my channel because he knows I like leather perfumes. He sent me some amazing leathers I've never smelled, so I am very, very grateful. This Santa Maria Novella is right there at the top. This and... Yeah, this and the um, Queer Ombre are going to get some serious wares very, very soon. So, before we get into the This Is Not A Top 10, 
which is going to be on the note of rhubarb and eucalyptus. I want to do scent of the day because today, oh, speaking about eye rolling fragrances that I absolutely love, um, this is a fragrance that I've kind of pounded the table on. I think it's underrated. I think uh, if you can pick up a bottle like this for, you know, a dollar per mil like I did, grab it. Grab multiple. Grab multiple bottles of this. So this is a 25 mil. I also have a 100 mil that I got for 60 cents a mil. Just amazing value for money. Uh, and this is Leonard Porhomme. So Leonard Porhomme is a spicy, woody, leathery scent, okay? My love of leather. And they've used that old school castorium. It's one of the only fragrances. You can see the short ingredient list on the back. This is from 1980 this came out. Ron Winograd, one of my favorite old-timey perfumers, uh, created this, which he also wrote a book I bought. I haven't had a chance to read it yet, but there is a carrot note in the heart of this. It's very strange. The opening is green, marjoram, basil. It gives you that Italian uh, grandmother's, you know, uh, spice cupboard in the opening with thyme, marjoram, basil, and then there's herbal lavender, there's green artemisia, there's spicy carnation. That carrot note is nuts. It's not carrot seed. It's actually carrot. And that note is repeated in Leonard in Leonard's other fragrances again and again and again. Uh, it's, it's woody. It's kind of like the way that Bellamy mixes in wood with the leather, but the wood here is very prominent. Uh, and the leather and the resins are in the base. There's frankincense, there's labdanum, there's old school castorium. Oh God, it's, I mean, the fact that you can still find this for so cheap and yet people are spending so much money on, on uh, some of the other vintages, it just doesn't make sense, you know, to a vintage lover. If, if money, that just goes to show that this hobby is not for, you know, it, it's not only for people with a lot of money. You do not have to have a lot of money to enjoy this. I got this for $25. $25 for 25 mil. Look, I've had this for years and I bought multiple bottles, but this is the first one I bought years ago. And look, I spent $25 on it. I've worn it three or four times since I've had it. And uh, look at the dent that I put in it. So what have I spent? Like $6 worth of juice at a dollar per mil? I mean, you do not have to have a lot of money if you are willing to wear stuff like this that was off the beaten path. Now, if you go, well, I want to have uh, Patu Pour Homme. Well, you're going to spend a lot of money for that. But you don't have to spend a lot of money to get that kind of experience. You can find that kind of experience in something like this. Uh, or there are many other vintage fragrances like this that are not as hype. Now, what's happening, though, is people are figuring out, hey, wait a minute, it's not just Patu Pour Homme that was great. It's the whole time period. There were Now, there were many flops, but there were also many hits. And so people are starting to figure it out and the prices are starting to rise. So if uh, you see a Leonard Pour Homme on the cheap, grab it, I'm telling you. And you don't need a million sprays of this. You know, uh, three sprays. One here, one here, one on your hand, you're set. It's strong. I'm pretty sure today at work people smelled me all the way, you know, to the elevator. It's it's strong. Um, okay, so let's, let's do the this is not a top 10. And let's start with the note of eucalyptus. Now, uh, eucalyptus is a very distinct note, okay? Um, you'll smell it in many uh, essential oils have eucalyptus in them. It kind of has this very distinct uh, camphor. There's this camphoraceous like smell and it's it can be described as sharp, slightly medicinal, and you will get hints of things like um, mint, honey, citruses, and you know, some people say it's like hiking along an airy stream inside of a sunny pine forest. It's that kind of vibe, okay? And I think my wife has like a eucalyptus essential oil that she puts on her temples if she gets a headache. It's, it's that kind of smell. 
which that medicinal smell can put people off. That's why it's a very tough note to use in perfumery. There's a couple that I have in my collection that I think highlight the note to perfection. And there's a few where it's really in the background. So let's talk about them. So the first one on the list that we're gonna talk about is a fragrance that I plan on doing an early impression very soon. I haven't had a chance to do one yet, but I will. Again, it's just time. It's just the time for me, just finding time to do this. And this is from the House of Imaginary Authors. And this is called Every Storm a Serenade. So Josh Meyer owns this house. He also does all the perfumes. And this is a 2015 release, aquatic green with a, a Danish spruce note, which sounds like something you can eat, a Danish, but uh, it's, it's spruce. Spruce is a note that is very underrated, uh, underused. So it's spruce, ambergris, calone, which worries me a little bit, eucalyptus, sea mist, and vetiver. So this is supposed to be uh, like this aquatic green. Uh, and I will do an early impression. That'll be like a nighttime scent. I'll put it on before bed and I'll do a quick hit or late night insight as Rich Mitch would say. Thank you. Sorry. It was a long day today. Okay, next uh, we're going to talk about a Bogwe. Now, Bogwe is a house that's done by the perfumer who owns the house is Antonio Gardoni. And other perfumers tend to really love him and respect his work. I struggle with his work for whatever reason. I haven't figured out why yet. I just know that everything I've smelled from him is just a little harsh, a little rough, a little intense. It's very intense. And um, this is an animalic floral fragrance and it's called Mai. Now Mai is a fragrance that when I interviewed the great Liz Moores, owner of Papillon, she mentioned that this is one of her favorite fragrances to wear. And I went, really? That's, this is a tough wear, you know? Uh, she obviously enjoys challenging things because this, she enjoys a challenge when it comes to perfume. And this is um, lots of jasmine, lots of ylang and rose and tuberose, big floral, okay? And then you add this aldehydic top but it smells nothing like a Chanel. It smells like if you took a maybe vintage Chanel and made it into this insane, modernized, animalic floral, okay? This came out in 2014, and there's a eucalyptus note in it, obviously, or it wouldn't be on the eucalyptus. This is not a top 10. Uh, it's eucalyptus, and it's definitely prominent. You get that camphorish, camphor, um, you know, minty, it smells very minty. At first I thought it was mint until I realized it was the eucalyptus that was giving that minty vibe. And what makes it so challenging, I think, is the fact that the jasmine is very indolic and, you know, indoles can sometimes smell uh, somewhat fecal. And there is a dirt is a very dirty, animalic, fecal, uh, indolic jasmine in here. And then you mix that with everything else and it's challenging for me. I, however, I have been forcing myself to wear this. So I've now worn it to bed a couple times in the last couple months. Cause I, when I got this a couple years ago, I wore it once and went, whoa, that's not for me and just set it aside. And now I'm revisiting it. And each time I wear it, it gets a little bit easier. I, I, I no longer completely hate this fragrance. Let's put it this way. Although I have a hard time appreciating his work. But as far as the eucalyptus note goes, but I do think this one, for some reason, maybe the white florals give me a little bit of a headache. Um, so yes, this is the house of Bagwe. And the fragrance is Mai. Okay, so there is Bagwe Mai. Next eucalyptus fragrance. There's really only three more, and then we're done with eucalyptus already. Uh, this one is one I didn't even realize there was eucalyptus in. If you want a eucalyptus fragrance where eucalyptus is not even thought about most of the time, it's more way, way in the back, uh, here you go. This is Bois 1920, and this is Real Patchouli. Now, Real Patchouli is probably one of the best patchouli fragrances that no one talks about. And I did a This Is Not A Top 10 Patchouli Fragrance video, 
You can go check that out under my this is not a top 10 watch list, but I'm going to rank them. I'm going to do a ranked. If I haven't ranked the patchouli one some yet, I will. I'll rank this very soon. And this is a very unique fragrance. It's an earthy, woody, chocolatey, just a beautiful patchouli. Divana, mandarin orange, celery. There is a celery note in here. Thyme, Texas cedar, eucalyptus, patchouli, Indian sandalwood, frankincense, ambergris, benzoin, labdanum, musk, tobacco, and vanilla. A beautiful patchouli. Thick earthy, you know, herbal, uh, green, woody, uh, resinous, you know, the tobacco and the eucalyptus kind of work in the background. Uh, it's, it's beautiful. And the only problem you're going to have with this is that you, you, rumor is you want to buy the eau de toilette. And I instinctively trust my brother across the pond, Rich Mitch, who bought a bottle of this actually the box said eau de toilette when it arrived it was the eau de parfum they were putting you know the new eau de parfums because i think they discontinued the eau de toilettes and they issued all their fragrances in eau de parfum now now the brand says nothing has changed just the concentration but the smell is the same rich mitch says no he says not true and he didn't like he did not like um obviously basically being lied to by the brand and then the brand took the cop-out route of well you bought it from amazon or wherever it was so it was a third party sorry we can't do anything about it which is a terrible you know they took the easy route out and now they're paying for it because we've been you know shitting all over them basically for it because this used to be a very underrated brand now we're telling people don't buy the new stuff buy the eau de toilette the old versions the new one is completely clear by the way it's very strange um but anyways, long story short is if you like stuff like Reminiscence Patchouli, if you like Patchouli Antique, if you like Psychedelic, you know, if you like those Patchouli, Patchouli, Patchouli fragrances, Real Patchouli, and it has the, um, uh, it has the Eucalyptus note too. Interesting, interesting fragrance. Will definitely get some wares this winter for me. And just two more to go. So the, the um, second to last eucalyptus fragrance is a YSL. And this is a vintage bottle. The new bottles, it's still available. Um, but it looks like it comes in the just regular Koros bottle. But, you know, instead of white, it's like silvery uh, with the built-in sprayer. This is the vintage. And this is YSL's Body Koros. So you can see it had this crazy stand from back in the day um, and it didn't have the built-in sprayer it had the cap and uh, this is an Anique Minardo actually this is a this is a perfect take on uh, eucalyptus because um, Anique Minardo has this skill and if you've ever smelled Anique Minardo's other creations like I mentioned some recently I did an entire video on her you can go check that out under perfumers portfolio, you know, search it, uh, go to the playlist. You'll find the Anique Minardo video. She did things like Lolita Lampica O Masculin. She did Jaipur Om by Boucheron. And they all have this similarity to them. And that similarity is the way that she uses woods with resinous notes, that benzoin, that ambriness, that uh, if you ever smell D squared potion, you'll know what I'm talking about. That's another discontinued one. So this one's not discontinued, but I hear the new version is a little bit watered down compared to the old stuff. I've never smelled the, the new one though. This is a bottle back when it was being distributed by, uh, I don't know, BRI. Who's BRI? I don't know who that is. Uh, I can't remember. Yves Saint Laurent, BRI. YYX, what is this? YY76. Um, but yes, I mean, now it's L'Oreal. I don't know if it was L'Oreal back in 2000 and 2000, because this came out 22 years ago. Um, but it is a very good perfume and very 
uh, mass, it's, it's mass appealing in a way, but it's interesting enough that in the winter, when I want to wear something like this, I could easily reach for this and it can keep me interested. And even though it's sweet, it has, Anique Minardo has, the brilliance of Anique Minardo is that she has this DNA about her where her fragrances have this, you know, resinous, uh, ambery warmth to them. And while they are sweet, never have I smelled a Anique Minardo fragrance, at least none of the ones in my collection, and went, oh, that's disgustingly sweet like I have with many. You've seen me do it on the channel over and over and over again. I just did it uh, with, a, with a fragrance that I did an early impression on. Um, you know, it, it was Astrophil and Stella. Petty Shetty, I absolutely butch, I, I annihilated that fragrance, and it was a terrible fragrance. But never do I smell one of Anique Minardo's perfumes and go, ah, oh, this is terrible sweet. Although there is a sweetness to it, she does that, she, she creates it with such elegance, you know, that it, um, it's, it's, it's really a joy to wear her, her, her creations. And in the winter, man, it's just perfect. Uh, so that's Body Koros. And finally... The number one eucalyptus fragrance for me is from 2009, and if you know my collection, you know what's coming. Uh, it originally was called Creed's Windsor, and then they, uh, you know, this was like a limited release, and then they issued the real uh, fragrance in 2013 or something. They put out this. So this is a four ounce bottle of Royal Mayfair. And Royal Mayfair is basically what Windsor became. I am going to do a comparison video one day because I think there are differences, okay? But the vintage bottle, if you can find these four ounce bottles for $200 or less, let's say, 180, 175, worth it. Absolutely worth it. But make sure it's the 4 ounce. Don't buy the new 50 or 100 mils. Make sure it's the 75 or the um, 120. That's my recommendation. You guys do whatever you want. I know somebody, you know, really bashed me because they were saying, oh, the new Aventus, you know, bottles from 2019 are fantastic. And I said, great, do whatever you want. I'm telling you, all the stuff I smelled from 2018 and on is terrible my opinion. Uh, but this is a floral fresh. This is one of my favorite rose notes in a masculine perfume. This is one of my favorite rose notes. Eugene's fragrance is probably the other. Um, and Aramis 900 is another. And Azaro Actor is another. But the rose note here is posh. You know, I don't know if you can see the label, but it's like suede. Okay. It's like smooth suede. And that smooth suede is how posh this smells to me. When I wear this, it smells like you literally are on Mayfair Street with your toes, your, your shoes off, your toes digging into like a mink carpet in a Bentley. That's the vibe that this gives me. Very high class, upper class. Um, it has an interesting gin lime and pine note in the opening with rose and tuberose. So Bulgarian rose, tuberose. Very risky to put tuberose in a masculine release. And then eucalyptus, orange, and cedar. And I did a, a video called Five Fragrances I Initially Hated and Now I Love, and this was on the list. I almost gave this bottle away uh, to somebody. I actually gave it, almost gave it to my mother uh, because this floral vibe, I just, I was like, oh man. And when I first got this in 20 whatever, when it came out, 2013, 2014, um, I was like, this is way too challenging for me. I tried to push through it and when I'd wear it, it would give me a headache and on and on. And then all I put it away. I came back to it a year or two later and it was like light switch. It went from a hate to a love. And it was just, you know, my nose had matured a little bit. I don't know, but... Um, um, if you want a Creed that really smells unique, you know, Creed gets a lot of flack for putting out 
designer perfumes and niche bottles. Uh, this is the Creed to Sniff. This is unique, classy, ingredients smell high class. Uh, I, I wish I knew who made this because this is a... Um, this is a fragrance who that whoever made it deserves to get you know some some love and 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 they deserve to get their flowers for this. This is good. Okay, so that is the eucalyptus side of the. This is not a top ten. Now we're gonna do the rhubarb side, and the rhubarb side is even smaller than the eucalyptus side. There's only a handful of fragrances, and um. One of them is, well, a couple of them are samples. So the first one is going to be Imaginary Authors again. And this is a fragrance from 2018. It's a citrusy, fruity fragrance. And it's called Sun Drunk. Now, Sun Drunk is Neroli, Honeysuckle, Rhubarb, Rose Water, and Orange Zest. So, um... Citrusy, fruity. By the way, uh, before we get into this, I should explain rhubarb. So rhubarb has this ability to be both, um, to be both uh, fruity and sweet, and at the same time sour. Okay, very tough thing to do to be both things at once. But it has the ability to be very nuanced. You know, fruity, sweet, and sour tangy, tart, zingy, right? Those are the, um, those are the descriptors. And it also can smell very green and, um, you know, almost like this red berry-like smell. So rhubarb, you know, adds this dimension, this texture, uh, this fruitiness to a perfume that is hard to place sometimes and it makes it very unique. And um, Sun Drunk, I haven't smelled yet, but that's one that I will because, again, the amount of juice, it's enough for me to wear a couple times at night and do a late night insight video. And then there is a rhubarb fragrance that I have reviewed on the channel already, and it was from a sample, and it's a Roja. There's actually a bunch of Rojas on here because Roja loves using rhubarb as, you know, that texture inducing note that adds a little something extra that other brands aren't doing. It's one of his secret weapons. The other one is Amiris. I notice he uses a lot of Amiris. Uh, but uh, this is a midsummer dream. Now, I did not like this perfume. I still don't like it. It's supposed to be a fresh floral fragrance with aldehydes, lemon, bergamot, grapefruit, mandarin, orange, lots of citruses, cyclamen, geranium, may rose, orange blossom, magnolia, rhubarb, cardamom, elemi, Pink pepper, patchouli, oak moss, vetiver, cedarwood, fir balsam, benzoin, vanilla, cacao, amber, carrot seed, iris, and musk. Basically, if you go watch my review, in a nutshell, I said this just smells like a cheap musk to me. That's it. it smells like a cheap musk. Very little else going on. With maybe a little bit of LME. I uh, was not impressed at all. In fact, I was very disappointed in this. I thought this is one of the worst rojas I've ever smelled. Um, and I, and I still do feel that way. Okay. So going to 2011, there was a Roja that he put out simply called Aoud. So the original Aoud Parfum. Uh, and I will do a video on this one soon. Woody Oriental. So this is, remember, this is 11 years ago, Aoud came out and, Back then, I really feel like people didn't understand true oud like we, they do now. We didn't have Bortnikoff, Ariz Ladore, you know, Ensar. We didn't have those brands back then. And so oud was whatever the hell the brand said they would. Tom Ford's oud wood to, was oud to many people. Um, except for the very small portion who were really into oud. And in 2011, there were very few of those out there. So I think Roja decided he could make this smell whatever the hell he wants. And so what they did is, is I think they created an Oriental with um, um, that patented Roja floral heart. And to me, this is a floral Oriental fragrance just as much as it is anything else. 
Uh, the florals in here are a big part of it. In fact, May Rose and Jasmine from Grass are two of the most prominent notes. Um, the May Rose and the Geranium play as a combo. The Jasmine and the Elaine play as a combo with each other, if you will. And the base is Oud, Ambergris, Cashmere Wood, Leathery Notes, Rhubarb, Sandalwood, vanilla, saffron, big saffron in the base. And but basically when you wear it, you get this resinous, saffrony, um, cinnamony rose fragrance. And it's very rose heavy. This gives me a headache sometimes. Um, and I have another decant of this. This is not the only one. And um whenever I spray it, sometimes it's very strong, very power powerful. And this has stained my clothes in the past. If some kind of gets on your collar of your shirt or something, it'll stain your clothes. So uh, be careful with that one. It is a good perfume, but I would never buy a full bottle. But I do want to do a review on it. Okay, next we're going to one that I do have a full bottle of. This is the one I knocked off the table earlier. Luckily, it's in a box. Uh, this is Roja's Scandal Perome Eau de Parfum. Does this look crooked to you? By the way, I was just looking at this. Does that look like it was put on crooked to you, or am I losing my mind? Uh, I was looking at this on the way in, and I was like, that scandal looks like it's, like, tilted. Um, anyway, Roja quality. Roja scandal pour on. This is the old, uh, what did they call this? Just paper label Rojas. This is what the original Roja bottles look like, with the cap that, you know, like Papillon uses and stuff like that, which I like this. I like this presentation, and um, this is a good take on a spicy fougere. It's good. Someone recently left a comment in one of the videos saying it's the greatest fougere of all time, and I think Rich Mitch kind of really let him have it. Um, it's good. It's it's not the greatest fougere of all time, but it is very good. Uh, it's lavender with spearmint, basil. Jasmine from Grass, Lily of Valley, May Rose, Violet, Ambergris, Cardamom, Cashmere and Clove, Labdanum, Cedarwood, Mossy Notes, Mossy Notes, probably whatever substitute they use for oak moss nowadays, Musk, Nutmeg, Patchouli, and the patchouli in the base is prominent. Um, and when you smell a fragrance like this from the atomizer, many times what you're getting is the base. You're getting the base notes. You're not getting the top. So here, I can smell the patchouli, uh, the rhubarb, the sandalwood, you know, but I'm not getting the spearmint, the the uh, lavender, the basil as much. That comes when you spray it. It, it is very, um, this is a this is a very proper gentleman scent. An elderly gentleman who has achieved much in life would smell amazing in this. I still wear it. Um, whenever you want to wear a fougere, but you don't want to wear something like Sar or Paco Rabanne Pour Homme. Or, you know, you don't want to wear one of those very old school uh, uh, fougeres. You don't want to wear fougere royale or something like that. If you want to wear a modern take on a fougere, I would wear this. Or I would wear Bracken Man by the House of Amouage. That's a beautiful modern take on a fougere. This is very good. Now, the eau, de, the eau de parfum that I'm holding right now is discontinued, unfortunately. Uh, and I've smelled both of the new stuff. In fact, I have samples of the new ones. The Scandal Parfum Cologne that they made and the Scandal Parfum. I have samples of both and I don't care for them. I don't care for the um, Parfum Cologne especially. I think the Parfum is a little bit better, but 50 mil for 500 bucks. Unless Roja is sending you a free bottle, I would say no. Okay, next. Next, we're going to do an actual parfum of a Roja. And this is one of my favorite Rojas because it's one of my favorite fragrances of all time because it's basically a copy of Guerlain's Heritage. And this is Roja's Danger Pour Homme. Sorry about the uh, fingerprints. Danger Pour Homme. Parfum. Now, so you can see the difference in the new versus the old Roja bottles. Okay, 
So I love this stuff. I adore it. Um, it's it's one of my favorite fragrance DNAs. This is very so. If you compare it to uh, Guerlain's Heritage, which maybe I will one day, Heritage tends to open up a little bit more. Um, Heritage will give you that uh, forest floor, fall leaves on the ground vibe, and then the patchouli kind of comes in. Whereas this opens up with lots of lemon, tarragon. I love tarragon in fragrances. It's actually one of my favorite opening salvos is to have tarragon in the opening. I absolutely adore it. Uh, with lavender, jasmine from grass, lilia valley, violet, ambergris, cumin, cedarwood, clove, galbanum, leather, musk, oak moss, patchouli, rhubarb. So there's no rhubarb in uh, Guerlain's Heritage. Tonka bean, vanilla, vetiver, and woody notes. And so basically what he did is he took he took Guerlain's Heritage and he added cumin. He added real ambergris. He basically did the same thing Olivier Creed did. Take um, Pierre Bourdon's in, in you know, uh, his uh, formula and just substitute everything for the highest quality materials and, and sell it for uh, crazy money. The problem is this is so goddamn good. Uh, and even though I knew he did that, I still had to buy it because if you want to see what he did on top of Heritage, um, you know, this is a great fragrance. I, I love wearing this. Uh, I, this is, to me, this is a boss scent. I mean, corner office, C-suite, top floor, you know, beautiful view of the river. This is it. Oh, it's so professional, and yet it has something that just grabs me every single time. I love this, whether Heritage or uh, Danger Poor Home, I you know, this DNA is a love for me. And then the last two, the last two uh, rhubarb scents. So the first one is this. This is the first masculine, big masculine line that Thierry Vasser did when he took over Guerlain for Jean-Paul Guerlain. This is Guerlain Homme. So these are the old bottles. They don't look like this anymore. They now look like the Lome Ideal bottles. Um, and they used to call it Eau de Parfum Intense because originally it was just Guerlain Homme, which I think came out in 2008. And then Guerlain Homme Intense Eau de Parfum Intense came out in 2009, and then they changed it all up and, and put out Guerlain Om and Guerlain Om EDP. So this is now just known as the EDP. So you don't have to pay big money for a vintage. Guerlain does good reformulations. Just get the new stuff. Uh, it's fresh. It's woody. It's basically mojito in a bottle. This is peppermint, rum, lime, rhubarb, floral notes, floral notes, patchouli, cedar, and vetiver. And um, there is a, you know, if you wanted to wear a fresher fragrance in the cold weather, this is a great choice. Um, the, the mojito vibe, don't be scared to wear this to work or anything because it has rum or this mojito-like vibe. This is professional. You know, it's a Guerlain. Uh, normally, they don't make bad fragrances, in my opinion, but uh, this one does not get very much love at all. Very few people talk about Guerlain Ohm anymore, but I still I still really like it. So, that is that one. And then finally, the final rhubarb fragrance is Cherry Mugler's B-Men. And you can see I have this little 10 ml uh atomizer decant that I will wear and talk about very soon. Uh, B-Men, I need a full bottle. B-Men is uh, rhubarb with fruits, spices, sequoia, amber, and vetiver. And the rhubarb note in the opening of this is perfect. I mean, it is just perfection. That rhubarb with the uh, Thierry Mugler DNA 
It smells different from the Amen DNA. I don't know if there's that patchouli in here, but I will tell you, it really reminds me of this. Yoji Om from the house of Yoji Yamamoto. If you, these two are like, you know, brothers, sisters, cousins, if you will. Um, this has a boozy note, I think, in it, or tobacco or something. This doesn't, but um, uh, this has anise, I think. This may have anise, even though it's not listed, but the rhubarb in the opening softens it. You know, it adds that fruity, the rhubarb mixes with the fruits in the opening very well. Yes, very good fragrance. So B-Men is the final rhubarb fragrance on the list. I know we're at, at an hour and 10 minutes. Um, I just want to say thank you very much. Um, gosh, I'm sorry, I keep forgetting. Uh, Armando, thank you very much, Armando. I really do appreciate it. You've given me so much to talk about, so much new things to smell. The fragrance industry and world is, it's impossible for one person to know everything. But thanks to the kindness and generosity of many of you, I've been able to get my nose on stuff I never would have, not in a million years. Um, like stuff like this, you know, these kind of fragrances, like, I mean, I knew they existed, but, uh, I've never, I uh, never would have bought this ever. And I'm loving it. Just smelling it from the cap. This, uh, queer ombre is a stunning scent from the cap. I can't wait to wear it and see if it's as good on skin as it smells like, uh, here smelling it off the, off the cap. So Again, thank you, Armando. Thank you to everyone who's watching. If you have favorite eucalyptus or rhubarb scents, let me know. If you have favorites from the samples that he sent me and the atomizers and the partials, um, let me know which ones you want to hear about first. I think this is the one I want to wear first. But um, thank you, everyone. I appreciate the support and feedback. Uh, love seeing your faces in the comments. Do leave a comment if you watch the video and look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you. Bye, everyone.